Right folks, we're getting higher. We're not, we've only got a couple of more stretches. About 20 yards and we'll be up the top. Higher hair nap. That's the big hill. Might not be Longstone Hill. That's the hill that goes up the top above Shepherd's Coombe. Over to the plantation, which you can't see, and old Foxton over there. No, Longstone Hill is another one further over, I think. I think it could be Longstone Hill, part or a part of it. Um, yeah, those girls disappeared. There were not many people are coming up this way. It's good for me, lungs, though, is it? Yeah, some people coming down from over there now, look. Hinkley Point. You can't see bring down Steep Home or any of that today or Wells. It's too misty. Yeah, they're moving away now. But I mainly meet people coming down. I like coming down it as well. <laughs> but today I'm exercising the rib cage. So good for you. Though you hate it, right? This is really good for your cardiovascular system. Some sort of light from the some sort of light from the Second World War. They had these to guide the planes to stop them bashing into the hill. So there was a lot of American planes crashed in World War Two. <sighs> Quite a few. They were they hadn't trained long, you see. They haven't built up any skills. <sighs> yeah, I can remember when I did the Coleridge walk. I got a feeling I did emerge from over there. Now in the winter you'll be able to see more. You can't see that other path that goes down that way. And what I remember... I, I have been in there. I haven't explored it all, I must admit. I haven't. But that takes you down near a place where I stop sometimes, especially when I had the van. I used to stop there for a break. If I was going on to Porlock or something. Not if I was coming here, I just drive on around to Holford. Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Yes, yeah, a couple of years since I've been up here. Not that many years, but I think I've done it the other way around last time. But this is the only big hill I've got to do all day, alright? Once you've done this one, when you've got most of your energy, the start of a walk, we had a gentle build-up going up um, Holford Coombe, or Glen, whatever you want to call it. We had a gentle warm-up. And uh, this is Dowsborough Hill Fort, by the way. And they don't cut the trees down here. To expose it. Not like they want to do in Western Woods. <sighs> no. They didn't cut anything down. The woods protect it. They're part of it. <sighs> and, the, and they protect the features. You can still see the Valums up here. I've walked all around it before. <sighs> I've videoed it before. It's on YouTube. It was probably done with the my brilliant Sonys last time I was here. Last time I was here, my, my really good Sonys with their viewfinders were working. Already you can see the valums and the ditches and whatever you want to call them. Yeah, you can see it. Shows it all the time. Oh, I'm in the shade now, everyone. I'm going to take the hat off for a minute. And I've got up here. And I'm bloody glad I have. It's beautiful. I'm taking photos as well. I've got such a lot of work to do because I do share with YouTube. Because not everyone's on my Facebook account. Um, but Facebook aren't allowing my YouTube videos for, for some reason, I, they are. They, if it depends what direction I'm coming from, sometimes they do. Look at those trees. Look at them. Guardians of the hill fort. These are guardians of the hill fort. 
And here we have that all this has been, all these banks and everything, and little valley things, they're all part of the hill fort, a part of the defence. And look at its strategic position up high. Up high here. You can see for miles, you can say they chose well. We'll get onto the highest point in a minute. There is a higher point. It's in the middle of the hill foot, but I'm not doing that today. I'm going to go round that way today because I've done it before. I usually come round that way when I do it in the opposite direction. Okay. It doesn't really matter which way I do it. It's not really. I could go that way if I wanted to. Um, and you can see all the evidence of the valums and everything when you go there. The highest point is in the middle somewhere. But I'm going to climb up here. This is Sheila on the 29th of August 2024 at the age of 72 and I'm still getting out there. I'm keeping fit. I'm keeping my... I might not look fit. I might look like a country bumpkin who eats burgers. Well, I don't eat burgers and I hardly ever eat chips. They're like a once a year treat. When I, if I go anywhere, sometimes I'll have a pie, I might have a burger, I might have a sausage. But it's rare, I don't have it at home. I'm try, I try to eat fresh veg every day. I'm not vegan, I'm not vegetarian. I'm sorry about that. But I have given up facts. <laughs> and I like a glass of wine, but not a lot. Oh God, I just love this place. Two more people deciding, shall we do the climb? This would be the third lot of people I've seen contemplating whether to do this climb up here, which I've just done. And it wasn't too bad. because so I keep my legs strong all year and I carry a heavy pack. So I can carry all my water, my food, my spare clothing, my first aid kit, my cameras. You need to be able to carry that stuff. You need to carry stuff as if you might break your leg. That's how I always see it. I broke an arm once. And um, I sacrificed one bottle of water for two oranges today because I do need my vitamin C topping up. You can't, it doesn't accumulate in the body. You have to have it every day, vitamin C. So there we go, there's a viewing point, everyone. Part of the top of the hill fort, Dowsborough Hill Fort. This is where we should see deer, by the way. I saw a lovely young stag up here once. Of course, in a month's time, the rutting season starts. So you really have to be careful if you see a big bunch of stags. And they do come up here, believe me. Uh, this is gorgeous. This is history and archaeology and geology all in one. And probably anthropology if you wanted to look at the Stone Age or the Neolithics or the Bronze Age. See, if you just look down here, it's embankment again. More vallums. I'm not going all the way down. But so here's a really deep vallum here, you see. I've done some courses in archaeology for those people who think I know nothing. So it bends round. Yeah, I've done several courses on archaeology and I did archaeology and anthropology of di death and dying last year which was very very informative and it was global and it was very very interesting about all the different cultures around the world and there how they see death and dying it's um very very interesting I can't remember everything it was jam-packed that course I'll tell you I've got two thick wads of stuff um, really good video footage about how to identify bones and that oh that was another course I did once I've done well I've done some archaeology Roman archaeology um, I did quite a, a bit of that I did um, uh, what do you call it forensic I did some for a course on forensic archaeology so I've done, in the back of my head somewhere, there's something stored. But all I know, I used to have a very good photographic memory. 
very, very good. That's why I passed so many exams, I think, in the past. Because I can remember loads of stuff. And, uh, but now I'm more selective what I, and I apply my intelligence to stuff more, which is what you're supposed to do. Not learn off by rote, like we were taught in O-level stage. Um, yeah, yeah, I love doing things. That's why I did that um, archaeology and, 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 and um, not anthropology, yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. I did that to widen my knowledge because of family tree. Everything ties up with family tree. I've, I've, when I've done science courses, of course, with the OU, genetics, all sorts of things I've done. Genomics, I've done some genomics courses, looking at CRISPR and all that, and gene editing. I've done a lot of stuff. I've kept my brain alive. And it all ties, everything I do is connected to family tree in one way or another. And the cultures and societies that we lived in. <sighs> you know, okay, we, we can go back, well, I, I think we can easily go back a thousand years. Once you get the leads, it's not difficult to go back a thousand years, I don't find. We were so good at keeping records, but you have to dig. It's not just going to turn up and don't just copy other people's work. Do it yourself. If there's a mistake, it's yours. Don't own someone else's mistake. Look at that view. So anyways, that's why I'm here. That's why I come out in the countryside as well, to fill the ancients. I can feel them. I'm standing up on the hill fort now, and I can feel the ancients all around me telling me they've told me to come back and visit. Now, if you know, I was down in that valley earlier, Holford Coombe, I was down there, and there was a junction point at the fords. Well, if I'd gone up Woman's Coombe, I would have been down, or Ladies Coombe, so I would have been down, sort of down there now, walking along, coming out. But I chose to come up, climb the hill, make the rib cage work. Of course, at this time of year, with everything lush and green, you don't always see some of the archaeology, if you like, which is the vallums and the ditches and the defence structures. You don't always see it when it's all covered up with ferns and long grass. And of course, I don't tend to come out, I haven't been coming out here in the winter, so, you know, it's mainly been like this when I've come out. But you can find lots online about Salisbury Hill Fort. There are, what I just say, the Quantock Hills are known to be a giant burial ground as well. There are also lots of Anglo-Saxon battles out here. And some big battles took place. Some of the big routes going through the Quantock Hills are marching routes for the Saxon armies. So there's lots and lots of history here. You can just imagine the Anglo-Saxons rushing, different tribes rushing through the trees. Fighting each other. Right, I'm going to put my hat on for a minute because I'm fed up with carrying it. It's giving me arm ache. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? I'm going to be quiet for a minute, everyone. Because I'm going to try and see if I can hear deer. I'm going to turn off the camera a minute. And then if I turn it off, if I turn my cameras off, you can bet your life a stag will run in front of me and I'll miss it. It's happened to me before. Of course, my sister Jude. I'm whispering because case says dear. My sister Jude knew this place very well. Her spirit's up here. My sister's spirit's up here. I know. 
Yoshi's up here. Now, when I came up here a couple weeks ago, not this part, another part, I never saw a deer until the last five minutes of my visit. And there it was, this lovely young deer. I, I videoed it. I haven't shown anyone yet. And, um, I haven't shown any of that video, actually, that I did. I've got backlog stuff, because I'm still catching up with me my family tree trip stuff. I can't stay in, you see, when the weather's nice. I just can't. It, to me, it's a sin to stay in when it's nice weather. Is it? Yeah. It's a terrible sin. I've got so much of the Quantox to explore yet. I don't... I, I mean, I started exploring it when I retired. When I retired, that was the one thing I wanted to do. Let's get up here and explore this beautiful place. Breathe in the pure oxygen. Enjoy the fragrances of nature. And let my body relax, unwind, melt into the landscape even. Feel a part of it. Feel the ancestors all around me. Oh God, it makes me feel like that. And mind you, it makes me feel like that when I'm in a Norman castle. As you know, because I've traced a lot of my ancestors to the Normans. And the Vikings, because the Normans were Vikings, originally. That's why they're called Norsemen, Normans. They were Vikings, originally. And I've got a lot of that in my DNA. I've got it in my ancestry, what I've traced and tracked. There's a path down there. I can see a whacking great anthill, actually. The first one I've seen. Whacking great anthill down there. That's the first one I've seen for years. It's between those two trees. Let me just see if I can zoom in to show you. I haven't seen one of them since childhood, or maybe adult, adulthood. See that there? That is an example of a great, big, big ant, anthill. I'd love to go up close to it. There's a path down there. I might do. I think I'll come to that and then we'll backtrack just to take a picture of that. That's like, oh, there's another one over there. They've moved. They used to get these nearer Holford. They used to be. It's the first time I've seen one for years. That's a big one. As I've told people before, I fit as a child when we came out here. Me and this boy fell into one. We had to keep bathing in the streams. We were in agony. All the ants oh, just went crazy. We were running down the hill, you see, like running down like you're doing your child, chasing each other. And we went, both of us fell into this massive hill of ants. I'm going to go down there, I'm going to backtrack and take a picture of that up close. I hope you're not bored yet, everyone. I know I've been out here before, but each time I come, it's different. And you see that track there. One of the visits when I came and I got to that junction, I looked back and there was a stag standing there. He didn't move. He wasn't a big stag. He was a young stag, but say a teenager. He wasn't small. He wasn't big. And he just stared at me. And in the end, I backed away. And I got him, I got him on video. <laughs> I managed to get him on video and take a photo. It's always a bonus, isn't it? If you can take a photo. My camera will need uh, charging in a minute. Will it? Yeah. We just do a bit of backtrack because that I need to take a picture of that anthill. Right, over and out for a minute, folks. <laughs> 